So when the um, young boys and girls come here for, for, for the process, they will, um, as I'm sure any of them who are watching this now know, they will sit papers. And yes, clearly we want to see that they, that they are, are, are able on paper and, 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 and know some things. But it's so much more than that. You know, they're, they're also interviewed in, in two or three different settings. And we're looking for people who are curious. We're looking for people with, with a bit of spark, a bit of, a bit of energy um, about them. It certainly isn't a, a knowledge competition. You know, it's not some sort of uh, mastermind competition where, you know, where we look at those, where, where we, we only want those who have been hoarding facts for the past five years. You know, very much the opposite. We're looking for people who clearly have a, a good base level of knowledge, but are hungry for a lot more and will will come here and continue to be to be curious and to you know wander around with their eyes and ears open so really we're looking for someone who um who is who is wanting to do more uh, wanting to go deeper into their into their academic work and um and achieve excellence as i say we're not just about excellence in terms of who comes top in in a test in maths um we're looking for our scholars to um, to excel in class. You know, they, they would typically ask some good questions and certainly um, answer them too. Reading is key, I think, as well. Um, obviously, it's a busy school and, and we work you quite hard um, and academically on top of all your other commitments. But I would say just thinking about the, the scholars who are really thriving here now and who are really prospering, they've always got a book on the go. And when they're younger, say, third form, fourth form, it tends to be more general, um, some fiction, some non-fiction, irrespective of subject area. But certainly once they get older, you see our, our better scholars starting to align their reading a little bit with the, with the direction they're on or, or the pathway they're on um, academically. You may have a situation where a scholar is, say, outstanding at STEM subjects, but not quite so good at modern languages, or, or by the same token, a brilliant linguist, brilliant in the humanities, doesn't like numbers so much. You know, and again, that would not stop us from, from awarding a, a scholarship. If, you know, I, I'm a linguist myself, and you know, if, I, if I found a boy or a girl who, 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 who really had an aptitude for languages and was reading and reading, but, but didn't, really, uh, didn't really care for chemistry too much, then that wouldn't bother me one, one, one little bit. It's a supportive atmosphere, you know, they see a lot of each other and of course we aim to um, really work on that camaraderie and sense of community amongst them via the extra sessions, which by definition are slightly elitist, slightly exclusive, I think that's the point here and we, we shouldn't be afraid of, of saying that, you know, I'm looking to identify the, the 20 most academically impressive pupils in, in the year really. Um, but no, there's certainly no, um, no sense of, of nastiness uh, between them. And, you know, it's one of my favourite parts of the job because I, I often sit in on a lot of sessions that are given by my, my, my friends and colleagues here in the common room. And um, no, I love to see how the scholars bounce ideas off each other. And uh, it's, you know, I, I, I sit at the back sort of smiling to myself, watching them develop. And, and, and no, no, there's, there's never any, um, any sense of uh, um, one-upmanship or, or anything like that. No, they're, they're, they're a fairly tight group, I think.